This Postla Vantore mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. A faint sticker on the side reads, RCM Emergencies Desk Number 8102, with a slogan, Mankind Be Vigilant. The box seems happy. Eat shit pig, fucked by the coon, and sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. The mail collection box seems cathartic, thankful even. So do you. You shudder, then you swallow. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum. Rendering the metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks un- The metal feels cold and probably some kids. A simple but clever solution to ruin in a coin-operated viewer. It took ingenuity. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word Onuk written on the other side with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, a great moral height to be around the large wooden building you see chunk the metal feels cold and this coin operated viewer is facing south why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty there was a revitalization project in 49 a design studio tried restoring martinez to its pre-war glory it didn't stick They got as far as the street lamps and the statue on that intersection. Then something went sour. I suspect that something was Eva Claire, the union leader. He muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. That's odd. I could swear you were a police officer. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. Sod off, pig man. Art is above the law. A brush? An artist? 
The red splatter is urban expressionism. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Hatred, disgust, it's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her steering. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershaw. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here though. Just union cads. And my name's not Mona, so... This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know. Yeah? Lying is cool, I guess. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got eyes on you. striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good morning, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Um, I meant you, the Revachol citizens' militia, the police. Phaeton, my maiden name. Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Relax. She meant it in jest. I'm glad to see you here. Like steel. There is strength there. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will. Glad. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. This is a tactic. It happens quicker than a shooting star. But did the lieutenant just wink at you? How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, why, yes I am. Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Technically, the neighboring Ozon and Fas Alamer island groups are archipelagos, while Le Caillou, by contrast, is a single fertile landmass, the fourth largest island in the world. It is not an archipelago. Okay, if you want to get technical, 
The point is, we're all on islands here, and sail is still the most expedient way to get from one island to another. Especially when you're in a hurry to resolve a strike. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbour. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Ravachol, between the city and the islands. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. Before you do, it would be pertinent to ask other questions. Gather Oh my, the E word. You mean to say that it's a symbol of conspicuous consumption? That I'm a member of the ruling class? Detective. May I remind you that Mrs. Messier is a... Then what does that say? Does it say, docking reserved for residents of Rue de saint Gislaine, 3333A, this old proletarian haunt here? As I said, plenty of people drive boats, of all so... Um... She takes a... Okay. Of course. Nothing happens for quite a while. It doesn't. My, it's as if there's a tiny spinner on the side of his head and he's reeling thoughts out. Except he isn't. Of course. Despair creeps into you, getting fat on your weakness. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right? I don't dispute that you have been charged with protecting the people of Earth. Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. Cop gives up the detective genre for social realism. Another police officer resigned from the RCM. Follow. A striking woman leans against the cabin top. Good morning, officers. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of... I'm glad to... Light. I was... That is good. There's a trace of... It happens quick. How interesting. Why, yes I am. Of course there are. Yes we are. Technically. The name... Okay. If you want to get technical. The point is... I haven't... Actually, it's for crossing along... Neither is this. You need to make this lady admit. Before you do, it will be... Oh my. The E word. You mean to say that it's a sim... Detective, may I remind you that... Then what does that say? 33A, this old proletarian um. She takes a sip. Okay. Okay. It is anti-centennial. I assure you, they drove quite a hard bargain for this space. But you're right. I am a bourgeois woman, and this is my fast, lightweight, interminably bourgeois boat. The boat? No. It is called Cordelati. 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. It's a pleasure craft, a 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for category one racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. My slew, 
I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Her nonchalance might be related to something called the Wayfarer Act. A law that says she doesn't need a license. Sly Fox, you're not aggressive enough to harass her further on the... The boat? No. It is called Cor My Sloop. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do. Good. What we do? There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revisholian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several. Why, thank you. I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. And to think, there are years when the group books losses in the billions. Warpines employ 72,000 people, all of whom have families that depend on their salaries. It is a tremendous responsibility. They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels part you know more than you let on. Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. You mean aside from being the Terminal's legal owners, who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? We built this district. We. There it is. She owns up to it. All the best parts of it. Rue de saint Gislaine with its bastions, the plazas, meteor and mosaic, even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to the investments from the WP. Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbor, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revacholian employees. A company getaway, for a weekend or a summer holiday, then came the revolution. But that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. The octopus that straddles Revachon. The Emergencies Act is the cornerstone of post-war Revachon, inseparable from the world it created. Good luck is only kept in place by the vested interests of half the civilized world, including your own. What the man means is that the Emergencies Act and the RCM both get their authority from the coalition government. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot in other words. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. I believe the official title is Senior Labour Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the Union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines counter- And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Wait. 
She just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a two meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Yes, I believe there is a connection, but that's a subject for later. What can I say? The Union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. Ludicrous even. It's meant. There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh yes, every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. In its defense, another said, demand democracy. Pretty tame stuff compared to every worker, a member of the board. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. That may well be. It's not up to me to decide, I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position, a hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. Mr. Clare told him to, how did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Yes, keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's of course not. Everard is fantastically... If you were to prick him with something sharp, you could see it oozing out. A knife, maybe? No, a rapier. Oh, heavens no. We get along just fine. Yet, now that you mention it, I can't stop imagining that black treacle just dribbling down his double chin. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Yes, Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see. 
with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. The Debardeurs Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Evrat and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask? I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs Union is... Thank you for being candid. Sadly, Wild Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades. However much you feed the wolf, the wolf always hungers. I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the pre- Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter at- This fool woman, her name? Sadly, the company records do not even give a name. She's just four women, in private correspondence. Holly, I don't even know if it's a sir or given name, and I don't have access to the Union's files. Indeed, the company suspects foul play, but there's nothing they could do. It was a Union matter. The point of the presentation is... Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. Of course. How else can I help? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to... Of course, ma'am. We should have him... And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope my... How curious. Why is that, Detective? I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? Oh, dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. But I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. She's a negotiator. Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or you can recover your badge. Though, if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. This is not going quite as I hoped it would, Detective. Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchman. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along. Or she's simply an adept improviser. 
Either way, we've played straight into her hands. Maybe this is all her plan. She might have heard about you. No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with... What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done and demand for her information on the lynching. I wouldn't go that far. Her reaction did come off as sincere to me. I think she's just quick to adapt. She's a professional, after all. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. The situation might have changed drastically by the time you look. You could request a new one from the station, but that would literally take months. street is you're ready to start building communism again yes you're ready to start building communism again you've built it before they've built it before hasn't really worked out yet but neither has love should we just stop building love so, what about all that communism you've promised to build? Word on the street is, you've woken up from a thousand years of slumber, promising to erect a version of communism, many times greater than any attempted before. Is that true? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich. Sodomize the landowners, impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket. Literally murder all human beings, regardless of their political beliefs. That funky style, very funky. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder, or do we get right down to it? Failure. It's about failure. Yes. Abject failure. Total, irreversible defeat on all fronts. Absolutely vanquished, beaten, curb stomped and pissed on. Until you came along. You will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world. You alone, against every living thing, against every human alive. 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well-organized ruling class. Towering city blocks of bankmen who have the ears of prime ministers. Million-headed armies of nations and the love of your own mother. You against the atom, the charm and the spin. Where the whole world failed. Matter failed to bend to human will. Human will fail to get out of bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are the last communist. Now get to work, comrade. Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
have you no shame. Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you are a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask quick. No, you got this. There's the ball. You're the game. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter, you'll make it work. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it, probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scar. Already your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating until you and the ball have merged into a... A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. Merde! Bordel de merde! A whole house of shit. What the hell is your problem? I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. You vandalized our game, son. We can't play petonk with five pool. Well, it damn well isn't. It's petonk. You ruined a petonk game. We want our pool back. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding. Isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you oil slug. You are as a goddamn bull. Will this... No, it will goddamn not. Thank you, officer. This is really something... Honestly, I think it's better than our old bull, even. Ugh, mon dieu. All right, all right, fine. What do you want, officer? Yes, why did you come here? It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. In Martinez, the union is the law. Cop is a pejorative term. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing pop. I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. But you must agree that nature, in her infinite wisdom, has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you? No reason to even feel bad about that. It's just the way of the animal kingdom. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety. Yes. It was left by heavy art. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Fine. What do you want now, then? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda. 
and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. Yes, the military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petanque on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, officer. I hate those foreign dogs, but... Uh, the enemy of my enemy and all that. They're the lesser evil. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Rivachol, whoever... You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal, or even if that damn clan Friselle had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. A true king in both blood and mind led Revachal before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Some manner of self-deceit is present in his thinking. Sounds like this gear. Damn Frisell. He was a king we couldn't protect. The Carabineers failed him and the crown. He died in the hands of the Hyperlay, in a very public execution. He slouches as he says that. It makes him smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. The Suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> They've forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth, and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. All you observe is a veteran. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Frissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King... Don't you mean Frissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven, although he was a clown. But he was our clown, ours to ridicule and to mourn. There's something he missed. You'll get to it, don't worry. 